Hello, this is Mr. Horton, and I'm reading Water by Melissa Stewart. Go ahead and turn to page four. A watery world. Take a look at Earth from space. Why does our planet look so blue? It's blue because water covers almost three quarters of Earth's surface. Half the world's plants and animals live in water. The other half depend on water to live and grow. Life as we know it couldn't exist without water. About 30, or 326 quintillion gallons of water fill Earth's surface. Lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams. The first life on Earth was tiny one-celled creatures that appeared in the ocean about 3.5 billion years ago. As time passed, these simple creatures changed and developed. They became larger, more complex creatures. Scientists believe that the first life on Earth was tiny one-celled creatures called archaea. This photo, which was taken through a microscope, shows a kind of archaea that lives on Earth today. This illustration shows just a few of the animals that lived in Earth's ancient ocean 600 million years ago. The earliest animals probably lived around 600 million years ago. Eventually, some animals left the water and moved on to land. But many animals and other creatures continue to live in Earth's oceans. All about oceans. Almost all of Earth's water is in its four huge oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, and Arctic. All of the oceans are connected, and salty seawater is always on the move. Earth's ocean currents. Deep cold water currents flow across the ocean floor toward the equator. Warmer water near the surface moves toward the north and south poles. What did the ocean say to the beach? Nothing. It just waved. Water words. Current. A flowing stream of water within a larger body of water. Equator, an imaginary line around Earth halfway between the North and South Poles. Wavy water. As the wind blows, waves form in the ocean, open ocean. When a wave gets close to shore, its bottom hits the shallow sea floor and slows down. But the top keeps going. This causes the top to fall over and crash onto land. The top of this wave is, wave is falling over. Weird but true, scientists have explored less than one-tenth of the ocean's total area. Look, across, look out across the ocean and you will see nothing but water and waves. But just below the surface, the ocean is teeming with life. Deeper down, the water is pitch black and freezing cold. But many creatures are able to live in these conditions. Blue striped snappers, plankton, a manatee mother and calf, a deep sea cockatoo squid, deep sea crabs and tube worms. Quiet waters. Unlike the salty ocean, lakes and ponds are filled with fresh water. These normally quiet bodies of water are fed by rivers, streams, or underground springs. They form in low areas of land. Lake Superior is the largest lake in North America. It contains one-tenth of the fresh water on Earth's surface. A glacier that still exists in Patagonia, Argentina. Many of the world's ponds and lakes formed in a surprising way. Thousands of years ago, Earth was very cold. Thick glaciers covered large areas of Europe and North America. As these ice sheets moved south, they scraped giant holes in the land. Then about 11,500 years ago, Earth warmed up. Many glaciers melted, and their water drained into the holes to form lakes and ponds. Water word, glacier, a giant ice sheet that slowly moves out in all directions. Fish and frogs, snails and turtles, Dra ducks and dragonflies. These are just a few of the animals that live in, on, and around lakes and ponds. A great egret catches its dinner. As water plants soak up sunlight, they get energy to make food. Then they become dinner for insects, fish, snails, and ducks. And those animals are eaten by frogs, birds, and other predators. Quiet waters are the perfect home for all these creatures. Go with the flow. The Rufiji River in eastern Africa flows into the Indian Ocean. As rain falls and snow melts, water flows downhill. It forms fast-moving streams that join together, becoming rivers. The water keeps on going until it reaches the ocean. Where do fish keep their money? In riverbanks. The kind of life in a river depends on how quickly its water flows. Plants can't grow in fast-moving water, but they have no trouble surviving in slower water. Animals live in the areas of a river where they can find food. As a river races across the land, it knocks loose bits of soil, sand, and rock. The fast-flowing water carries those bits with it. 
The water erodes riverbanks. It digs out river bottoms. Over time, the rushing water changes the shape of the land. Over millions of years, the Colorado River has slowly eroded the rock around it. This is the most important force behind the formation of the Grand Canyon in the United States of America. This satellite photo shows the large amounts of sediment that the Mississippi River dumps into the Gulf of Mexico along the coast of Louisiana. River, sediment, Gulf of Mexico. When a river reaches the ocean, its water suddenly slows down, and all the sediment it has picked up falls to the seafloor. Water words, erode, to wear away. Sediment, bits of soil, sand, and rock that are picked up by rivers and dumped in the ocean. Did you know, some of the salt and seawater comes from sediment that rivers pick up as they flow toward the ocean. Round and round. All the water in Earth's oceans, lakes, and rivers have been here for billions of years, but that doesn't mean it has always stayed the same. Water is special. It's the only substance found naturally in three forms, solid, liquid, and gas, and it can easily change from one form to another. Icicles are a solid form of water. There's liquid water. When liquid water gets hot, it evaporates and forms water vapor. From gas to liquid, place an empty drinking glass in the freezer. After 10 minutes, take the glass out and watch what happens. As warm water vapor in the air hits the cold glass, the vapor cools down and condenses. The drops of liquid water that you see on the glass came from the air around it. Water words, water vapor, the gas form of water condense, to change from a gas to a liquid, and evaporate, to change from a liquid to a gas. The water cycle. Water doesn't always stay in one place for long. It's always on the go, moving from oceans, lakes, and rivers to the air, to the land, and then back again. This process is called the water cycle. Weird but true, it takes as many as 15 million tiny water drops to form a raindrop large enough to hit the ground rising up. As the sun beats down on oceans, lakes, or rivers like this one, liquid water heats up. When it gets warm enough, it evaporates. Then the water vapor rises into the air, chilling out. As the warm, moist air moves up, it starts to cool. Cool air can't hold as much moisture as warm air, so water vapor in the air condenses. It forms tiny water droplets. Falling down. The water droplets bump into one another. They clump together to form clouds. The drops grow larger and larger, heavier and heavier, until they fall to the ground as rain or snow. Round and round. Some of the rain and snow, snow soaks into the ground. The rest lands in oceans, lakes, or rivers like this one. And the water cycle continues. Nine cool facts about water. Number one, more than two-thirds of the world's fresh water is locked up in glaciers. Number two, when ocean water evaporates, its salt gets left behind. That's one reason seawater is so salty. Number three, only half of the world's people have piped water in their homes. Number four, a leaky faucet that loses a drop per second could fill 16 bathtubs in one month. Number five, water vapor usually stays in the air for less than two weeks. Number six, salt water freezes at a lower temperature than fresh water does. Number seven, the biggest snowflake on record fell in Montana in 1887. It was bigger than a dinner plate. Number eight, the energy in moving water can be used to make electricity. Number nine, during a downpour, rain may speed through the air at 20 miles an hour. Water and weather. The air around us contain, contains a variety of different gases, but when it comes to weather, the most important gas is water vapor. Water vapor can become the rain that ru ruins a picnic. It, be it can become the snow that closes schools. That's why people check the weather report before deciding what clothes to wear or how to spend the day. Near the ground. On cool nights, water vapor near the ground condenses. It forms tiny water droplets. When the tiny water droplets hang in the air, we see them as fog. When the water vapor condenses on objects like grass, leaves, or a spider's web, we see dew. Why did the water vapor condense? It wanted something to dew. If the nighttime temperature drops below freezing point, the dew changes into a solid. The next morning, we see frost covering the grass. Water word, 
freezing point, the temperature at which liquid water changes to solid ice, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. In the sky, the air around Earth is full of water vapor. It's close to the ground and it's high in the sky. When the water vapor above our heads condenses, we see clouds. Clouds come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are miles and miles above the ground. Others are much closer. Scientists divide clouds into three major groups, cirrus clouds, cumulus clouds, and stratus clouds. Cirrus clouds, high wispy cirrus clouds are usually the sign of good weather. Cumulus clouds, puffy cumulus clouds can bring showers. Stratus clouds, thick low stratus clouds often cause a full day of rain and drizzle. The Namib Desert in South and Southern Africa gets less than a half of an inch of rain each year. Too much, too little. In some parts of the world, it rains almost every day. In other places, it hardly rains at all. The plants and animals in these areas know how to survive in their surroundings. But sometimes a storm dumps too much rain. Rivers overflow and, and the land floods. The water can destroy homes and fields full of crops. Other times, little or no rain falls on an area for weeks and weeks. This is called a drought. Soil dries out and plants die. People may run out of water to drink. Too little rain can be just as damaging as too much rain. Let it snow. In winter, chilly air can freeze some of the tiny water droplets that make up a cloud. Nearby, liquid droplets stick to the ice and they freeze too. As more and more droplets clump and freeze, the ice crystal grows heavier and heavier. Finally, it plunges downward. Falling ice crystals collide and form snowflakes. By the time a flake hits the ground, it may contain thousands of crystals. What's a snowflake's favorite dessert? Ice cream. Close-up photos of snowflakes. Did you know, if falling snow starts to melt or mixes with rain, it becomes sleet. If raindrops freeze as they hit the cold ground, they become freezing rain. If whipping winds toss raindrops high into the sky, they can freeze solid and become hail. A hailstone can be as big as a grapefruit. Water in your body. Water isn't just an important part of our body, it's an important part of your body too. Of our planet, it's an important part of your body too. More than half of your total body weight is water. Your body uses water in all kinds of ways, from digesting food to getting rid of germs. Your body loses water whenever you sweat or go to the bathroom. That's why you need to drink plenty of water every day. You could live a month without food, but you can only live a week without water. Water in your life. You probably drink about a half gallon of water each day, but you also need water to clean your food, clothes, and body. Believe it or not, you probably use between 80 and 100 gallons of water every single day. Think about all the ways your family uses water. Using the table below, work with an adult to add up how much water your family uses each week. Is it more than you expected? What did the faucet say to the water? You're a real drip. Ways we use water at home. Toilet flushing, about six gallons per flush. Shower, about eight gallons per minute. A bath, about 40 gallons per bath. Washing machine, 60 gallons per load. Dishwasher, 15 gallons per load. Brushing teeth with the tap running, 10 gallons per brushing. Washing hands with the tap running, two gallons per washing. Water warning. We drink water, we use it to cook, clean, and carry waste out of our homes. Farmers use it to grow crops and companies use it to make products. Since the 1950s, the amount of water people use has tripled, but the supply hasn't. In some places, water is being used faster than it can be replaced. Scientists worry that soon there won't be enough water for us and the creatures that share our world. What can you do to help? Use water wisely. Rain barrels collect and store water that runs off your roof. You can then use it to water plants, wash your car, saving up to 1,300 gallons of water during the summer months. Having enough water isn't our only problem. We also need to keep it clean. Right now, ships are dumping trash into the ocean. Factories are pumping waste into rivers and streams. Chemicals that farmers use to kill insects are draining into lakes and ponds. All this pollution can make the dangerous uh, the water dangerous to drink. It can also harm fish and other water creatures. We need to work together to stop the pollution. It's the only way to protect our world's most precious natural resource. Taking part in a local water cleanup day is one way to help reduce water pollution. 
Water words. Pollution. Harmful matter that makes water, soil, or air dirty. Natural resource. A material found in nature that is useful to humans. Be a quiz whiz. How much do you know about water? After reading this book, probably a lot. Take this quiz and find out. The first life on Earth appeared in the ocean about A. 11,500 years ago B. 326 million years ago C. 600 million years ago or D. 3.5 billion years ago Number 2. Which is the largest lake in North America? A. Lake Michigan B. Lake Superior C. Lake Huron or D. Lake Erie Number three, rain and melting snow flow downhill until they finally reach A, a stream, B, a puddle, C, the ocean, or D, a river. Number four, what happens when water vapor cools down? A, it evaporates, B, it freezes, C, it condenses, or D, it stays the same. What can cause a full day of rain and drizzle? A, stratus clouds, B, cumulus clouds, C. Cirrus clouds or D. Fog How much of your total body weight is water? A. Less than a quarter B. More than half C. Three quarters or D. Almost all of it What causes water pollution? A. Ships dump trash into the ocean B. Factories pump waste into the rivers C. Chemicals drain into lakes and ponds or D. All of the above The End